Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Today, we are speaking with someone who won first place and turned pro at NPC USA's in 2019, just this year, which of course you guys are here this in 2020, but when we're recording this, happened this year. After five years of competing and doing six national shows, she has competed 13 times. She's a posing coach for bikini and wellness division and does bikini competition prep through online coaching as well as lifestyle training. So welcome to the show, Lauren Adams. How are you doing? I am great. How are you? Doing awesome. I'm so happy you're here and to be connecting with you and would love to just start this off by knowing if you have a ritual or anything you do right before your heel hits the stage. Oh, that's a good question. I've heard you ask that before. Um, I, I uh, honestly, it sounds, you know, kind of probably a lot of people say the same thing, but my uh, faith is really important to me. I will always say a prayer. Um, this year I had, um, usually I would either call my dad or have like a teammate or something with me if he wasn't available. But this year I had um, someone that I've, you know, been dating or whatever, I say a prayer with me uh, before every, every uh, pre-judging and finals and it seemed to work out pretty well. So I'm going to keep that one going. <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. And um, you've been competing for a while now, so I'm sure that's evolved and you have 13 shows under your belt. So I'm curious to know what inspired you to start competing in the first place. That's a good question. Um, so I grew up playing all different types of sports. I played um, softball mainly was my biggest one. Uh, and then we also did cheerleading, gymnastics, all that stuff. Most, uh, a lot of girls do, especially in the South. And also did some volleyball, swim, things like that. And I went to college. I was not talented enough in softball to, or any of those sports to take it all the way to <laughs> school so um did a, just kind of actually started looking into way back in college um like bodybuilding.com I started following James yes. Jason somehow on like back then I mean I was kind of I don't know I don't remember MySpace something where uh wherever the early or mid-2000s was I guess 2007 so um I started following Jamie Eason's plan through school and um Actually, there's this, um, another girl that kind of fell off too, that I followed for a little while on Instagram. I kind of don't remember her name, but I remember looking at her pictures and being like, dang, I want to look like her. And she posts all her workouts on, they were all um, from bodybuilding.com. So I started sort of following that back in school because I didn't really have a sport to follow. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of like, I don't know, maybe a few years after I got out of school, I just kind of started getting involved in Instagram a little bit more and kind of following you know, we all were looking for 30 different ab workouts to do in 20 seconds and things like that on Pinterest and Instagram. And somehow or another, bikini just started becoming popular like a couple of years or so before that. And um, I just started following different athletes. Amanda Latono was a really big one. I started following other ones like that. And I was like, I want to do one of those. I feel like I really just want to channel all my like competitiveness and athleticism I grew up with like into that. And I also you know, a lot of it, unfortunately, I know now a lot of it, um, where my drive for competing does not come from aesthetics. Like you can ask anybody, I dress like a bag lady. Most of the time I'm not over here showing everything off. Like I like to have muscle and just fun to have curves, but really it's to me, it's like, can I do the hardest thing? But even then I will say it was like, I want to have a body that I'm proud of. I want to look like that. I want to only get one time on the planet and I want to see what I can do. So that's kind of where it all stemmed from is like the drive of wanting to, kind of just push myself bring some of my athletic roots back and just try it I, I was just gonna quote unquote I was just gonna do one and <laughs> you know and then it sort of got the bug from there but um, that's kind of it that's awesome I always love it when athletes come on here and say like 
my goal was to do one or do a bucket list show and then it turned into this and now I'm talking to them as pros and I think it's really cool because a lot of people are like they discourage people from doing like a bucket list or just you know doing one and checking it off and I think that it's unfortunate that a lot of people are discouraged from that because so many girls who have come on here are like that's how I started and then uh oh totally I mean I was I'll be full disclosure a lot of people who know me my name used to be Lauren Eaton I got divorced like last year and now my main name is Adams and it's been something I've been kind of trying to you know just own and push through and um, anyone who does follow me does know that so for those who don't Hi. Uh, but I, I also, um, yeah, I remember it's like, I actually had just, you know, gained a little bit of weight and we had did the whole wedding thing and all that stuff. And a year or so later, I was like, I want to, you know, dive into this. I want to try to find, you know, go ahead and try to start competing. And it was just a for fun thing. And then it turned into something else. So I, I mean, I love it. It's, I wouldn't say I'd, I would say it's like probably the biggest part of me, but I also don't want it to identify like my personality. It's just the thing I have the most interest in. And who knows how one day that might change, but it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's become, it's grown into something much bigger than one time for sure. I like the way you said that. Like, it's not, it's not all of you. Like, it's not like your defining factor, but it's something you enjoy a lot. Like it's, it's a major thing in your life. And um, yeah. I especially like how you said, you said, I only have one time on this planet. And so can I do the hardest thing? Like, how far can I push myself? And I think that's a really cool mentality to have and a clear sign of an athlete mentality for sure. Um, so yeah, I just yeah. thought that was cool. Yeah, I wanted to see, like, A, if I could do it, but B, also, I just remember being like, I know I can look better, feel better. I mean, I was, I, you know, I was drinking uh like bottomless mimosas and chips and salsa all weekend every weekend pretty much you know and then I showed and I would train you know four or five times during the week and when I say train I was gonna say oh I would exercise three or four <laughs> times during the week and think that it would be okay and so I was kind of just I was one of those people like you know weekends was just completely a free-for-all and then during the week I would try to just go and I would try to meal prep and you know, it wasn't totally all in. And that's why I was like, I got to see if I can do this. You know, I got to see how, like, you know, now here I am mm -hmm. still chasing the body that I uh, think in my mind is going to be the one that I'm like, this is it. Yeah. It's but it's, interesting. Also, it's also for goal raging. It's not just like, I need to have the perfect body. It's like for me, like to see if I can actually freaking do it. Yeah, it's like self-actualization. <laughs> oh, no, it makes total yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of what you share mm -hmm. is so reminiscent of my journey as well. And I'm just going to share really quickly with you because yeah. I, I can relate. I I remember being on bodybuilding.com, looking up um, mm -hmm. Ashley Horner, Jamie Eason. Uh, there, there were definitely yes, a few girl. others. Ashley Horner was a big one for me. I loved her leg. I loved her body. I just loved her muscle. And everything. she's cool. I can never yeah. be as cool as her. She's so cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I remember clicking, I think it was like Amanda Latona's body when I was like, oh, I want to look like that. And then it was Jamie Eason's body. I want to look like that. Like they had like that um, system you could go through. Um, but I, yes. I, I was playing, I was in high school when I got into a junior year. And for me, it was coming from like depression and anxiety. And also what really stood out about what you said is that pushing yourself. That was huge for me too. I was like, this is me as an athlete training in the gym, like in terms, I'm sorry, excuse me, like in the gym as in on the court um, as a volleyball player. Oh, right. And imagine what I could do if I was like training outside of practice and I was eating differently and I didn't love how I looked. And I was like, imagine how much further I could go as an athlete and also just in my own belief and the way I felt about myself. And so that's what sparked my journey. And it, you know, it ended up spiraling into an unhealthy relationship with food, which similarly, you know, paralleled to yours, which was, oh, let's go, let's go really, really well all week. And then on the weekend, I'm a binge like crazy and then back to it. And it definitely showed. And I remember when I hired my first coach, um, she gave me a meal plan and I thought that was the only way to get that type of body. I thought that was like the end all be all. So I followed that whole bodybuilder mentality or that societal standard of, Hey, be good all week. Then you get the weekend. And I think a lot of us get into that sport, get into this sport thinking that way. But over time, as we compete more and more, we see that it really does have to be a long-term gain. It really does have to be something that we can commit to and also be way beyond the aesthetic value and more so about how far can we push ourselves 
of course, now without sacrificing mental health and um, physiological condition. Of course. And exactly what you said, like, I mean, I didn't know any better. I mean, honestly, it sounds like it wasn't that long ago, but five years ago, it, the sport has, you know, it's, it's changed a little bit as far as Instagram now is a huge beast. You know, there's so much education out there and different people you can look up to and stuff like that. It just, to me, I don't feel, maybe I just wasn't as involved. Like I, it was, it didn't feel as readily available, but like when I first started, I remember I did not understand. Like I remember getting my first coach, like, Hey, like I'm just like really hungry. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, I've been eating like a few handfuls of almonds, like in between, like, you know, and that's not even really helping. He's like, do not eat anything. It's not on your plan. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I did not understand. Like, I remember even going to Costco and buying these little nut cluster snacks because I thought those are nuts. Like, yeah, and they're probably bad. like candy. And I was just like, <laughs> they were. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, so bad. And I, uh, I just remember being like, I'm like pretty hungry and tired. Like, I don't really feel like it's like, uh huh. Like, I didn't understand, like, a lot of people get into it without understanding, like, no, 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 no. I mean, it, you can do it healthy, you know, healthier ways than others, but at the end of it, you're still in a strategic starvation phase, and you're still pushing your body way past what normal levels are, and as a woman, your normal body fat and your hormones change and all these things, like, like, no, but I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I just was, I want to do one. You know, there was no education, yeah. there wasn't as much education, I don't feel. Yeah, and now there's that girls who, who think about competing. They go on Instagram. There's lots of coaches out there who are sharing their approach or are sharing their knowledge. There's just professionals within um, the industries ranging from the medical industry, um, specifically, let's say, hormones, and then you go into the industries of actually coaching and uh, the different approaches different physique coaches take. And it's pretty cool because a lot of newbie competitors can educate themselves and current competitors can go, Hmm, maybe there's another approach out there that I didn't know existed. Like before it was like, everyone kind of just thought it was like the bro diet, right. but now right. we've evolved in a, in a new way and the sport has taken on new forms. And also it's requiring different levels of uh, physique. That's for sure. So um, for sure. The, the, there was something else that I was going to say based on what you said, and I've totally forgotten it. So it probably wasn't that important. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll come back to you it'll come back to me at the worst on un, most unrelated time <laughs> um, we're gonna be saying all right nice to talk to you and you go wait 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 I remember that thing <laughs> <laughs> seriously um so you mentioned that um you know you got into competing to really see how far you could push yourself now having done 13 shows one of our girls who listens wanted to know what your most memorable stage moment has been aside from going pro with the assumption that maybe that's what you would have answered mm, no I mean honestly that was great like I was great moment because I I don't I mean a lot of people who know me personally know that I picked that show out because it was on my 30th birthday given the fact that this year has kind of been a whole uh revival of like my new phase of life because you know I went through that relationship and I got divorced and I moved from Atlanta to Charlotte recently and just all these things, a lot of factors um I was like I am going to do this thing this year that is the thing that's gonna I'm gonna that's gonna motivate me and it and it worked like I it actually happened which is freaking crazy but it I was really excited it was my 30th birthday I got to get the trophy yes it was awesome but that really wasn't my most member like it was definitely a huge moment but I would say like the first time um I think it's actually even only like there's two I'm gonna pick between them sorry but Go for really it. the first time I won like it was a really small show was not probably the most competitive ever but I think it was my second show or third show I don't it was small in Georgia but I won uh the only overall I've ever won and that was a really great feeling just because it was like full acknowledgement because I really killed myself, you know, you know, uh, relatively speaking, yes, to get I ready for that show. And I um, did everything I could to like, you know, at that moment, like level myself up from my first uh, stage appearance. So that was gr like my whole family was there. Like it was great. Like it was just full on very warm and fuzzy about it um like I said it probably wasn't the most competitive ever but it still felt good to be the main winner I mean it was awesome yeah um and the other time was 
since I have done six national shows, I will say, like, most people don't realize this, but I did not, I've never gotten first call out until this year. So, like, wow. this year before I turned pro, a few weeks before that, I got fifth, and I was like, hell yes! I was like, oh my god, I'm your first call out! Like, I have never get, ever gotten that. So that was the universe this year, a few weeks before Vegas, my turn pro. So to, for me, like when people post stuff and everyone's different, our journeys are all different, but whatever. Oh, I got, you know, fifth and my second or first national show and we really missed the mark today. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. For me, I was acting like that felt like first because like I've been in second college in the center for the past three years. So I'm like, yeah. It's like yes like I would not even have cared if I got gotten seventh I was in the first call out so I was super happy like probably honestly more like joy in my like because I knew I'd accomplished and leveled up even more to where I needed to be more than almost when I won my pro card if not just as much because I knew I was in the right direction and it was like full validation that I was doing all the right things so like it was only a matter of time um you know that since I was in the first call out if I kept going and that I was going to get it. And I've always known I was going to, or in my head, I've told myself, I'm going to turn pro. It's just when, like, I'm going to not stop until I get it. So to me, that was like, guys, celebrate it. Like celebrate <laughs> when you don't have to get your pro card, your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, like show, like enjoy the process. Like to me, it, it took me so long to get to the physique I needed to. So hearing me be in the first class, I mean, I was ready to bust. I was so pumped. So that, honestly, I will say that probably kind of takes the cake, like, more than anything, because I know how competitive it is nationally. It's all I've been doing. So, like, it was great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet. It's like yeah. you could taste the the moment that was coming next, too, I, I would imagine. It's yeah. Like, yeah, I for sure. I got to this. It's like that stepping stone right before the right. end. It's like that home stretch. You're like, if I could make it here, I know that's where I'm headed next. Like, like yeah. when you just said that, it gave me a little bit of like chills because like <laughs> that is how it felt. It was like it was like everyone started coming to me. They're like, "All right, well, I knew you're gonna do well this year, but you're taking that home that pro card in a few weeks. It's yours." Like I, I'm like, "Oh, shut up, shop, shop, shut up!" And then, I mean, it, when it happened, it was already like I had experienced it, like you said, because I was kind of anticipating it already. Like I knew it was gonna. I I don't want to say I knew because anything could happen, but I felt that it was gonna come. Mm-hmm. Like and I prayed about it so much and. It did, but that first call out, like, yeah, I mean, it took me a long time to get there, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's my fault, the coach's fault, anybody's fault, lots of different stuff, but uh, I just wish people would be more celebratory of their achievements. You don't have to, if you care, you're going to miss the mark if you got fifth or sixth, like, that's awesome, and it's in the, out of the whole country, that's crazy, like, be happy, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're happy when you get I mean, at least for me, I've been happy when I've placed fourth, third at regional shows, you know, small yeah, shows. I, yeah. I've been happy. I, yeah, There's a lot of talk about like, oh, it wasn't a competitive show. There wasn't that many people, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, like you said earlier, like it doesn't matter. I was still so freaking happy. Like, yeah, that's how we should be. Like we, we can still celebrate our success knowing that we've grown in a new way that's going to let us then up level again and again. Um, Right. And you know what it's like to taste it to where you want more (laughs) and what you want to achieve. And like, you know, that you have to improve. Like that fuels me. I feel like I was just talking to my, uh, to a girl you might know, I don't know if you know, um, my friend Sonia Lewis, but she is a pro Mm -hmm. too. She's been Arnold, all this stuff. She, uh, we were talking about the other day, she put on her story, something about a lot of girls, as soon as they turn pro, are like, okay, road to the Olympia now. It's like, but enjoy it. Like, how do you know? Like, you know, you haven't even done a pro show yet. So it's just like, take your time like it's not all like get to the end goal like where's the fun in that I mean it's Uh fun I'm sure yes it is to have several wins but the losses are what makes you better or the shortcomings if you want to call it that like to where you know like hey you know you've got some stuff to work on you're not totally perfect and that's okay like I enjoy it I enjoy critiques I always say I thrive off criticism like give it to me it's fine I'll work harder and come back so (laughs) I think that's a sign of a real competitor kind of what you're saying like be happy if you get third, that's a, or, you know, or whatever it is, like, it's an improvement from what you came from, and yes, we all want to freaking win, you know, but yeah. also, it's okay, there's a process to it. Yeah, absolutely, on my very first show, mm-hmm. I didn't even get called out, and I think that, I think that knowing how that feels also influences oh, yes. how great it feels to get called out, or to, to win the trophy, mm-hmm. or to walk away, like, 
I had the most drive ever after a show I competed in and I got third place in the open division. You needed to place top two to get nationally qualified. I got third place and there were like 15 or so girls in that class. And I remember That's being, awesome. Right? I was That's so awesome. proud of myself. No, that, Thank you. With my girls, my clients, I'd be like, I would not be mad. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, we got third. That's on 15 girls. That's a lot. Yes. And, you know, uh, that's, that's how I lot. felt. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then there's people, are you okay? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm okay. What are you talking about? Totally Never fine. Been better. Like, <laughs> I know. It was amazing. Like, oh, I know you wanted that pro car, but you got, I'm like, dude, I've never been a first call out. So so it's just like I'm really excited right now. <laughs> yeah. That was like such an amazing <laughs> show because then it lit that fire. I was like, well, I'm gonna do a double peak week because I'm gonna get nationally qualified at the next show. It gave me that I was excited I enough did. and I did. <laughs> right. There you yeah. go. I was like, it was like that wouldn't have happened if I well, it would have happened, but I mean it wouldn't have happened the way it did if I didn't embrace the excitement and pleasure and the results that I re achieved at that show and took that with totally. me as fire for the next one. And totally. Um, you finally got your pro card at USA's after you said, you know, you hadn't been getting first call outs. And so what do you think contributed or did the judges give you any insight into what contributed to you finally getting it? Um no, uh, my feedback uh, basically from that show was like, you know, pretty much, I mean, no, there's pretty much zero negative feedback for going into the, I like going to the pro league. Like I asked them, what do you recommend? Like, what do you, you know, what is your recommendations going in to compete at the pro, uh, during and on pro league or in the pro league? And they're just like, I mean, nothing really, <laughs> like they didn't have much. But before that, it had always been uh, lower body conditioning, um, getting to that point. Uh, I will say by the time USA's came, my body this year was a little tired. Uh, so it was, it was, it was either like it was going to happen then or I was going to take an off season right away and then like do a try again next year. Um, so I don't really, I don't really have anything that, like as far as, I don't know, feedback like that they said was why I won from that show. But I do know that. Um, I talked to, let's see who I talked to. I actually talked to my, uh, I don't know, Mo, one of the judges for a little while after. Um, and, and also like, I have a couple other judges I'm friends with Joe and some other ones, but they're just like, well, you're, you actually like, you're just the most like symmetrical. You're, um, the posing, the presence, the whole package itself was just kind of like, you're the obvious like winner in that situation, but they're also where, you know, some other girls that were way tighter than me, I'll say that, like, I know looking at the pictures, like, I'm not the leanest, that's why I always put posts, like, you don't have to be the leanest in bikini, it's about full balance, and the shape, and the poise, and the grace, and all that, all that stuff that goes together, and just being completely polished, and like, healthy looking, um, one of the things that I know for sure, um, the head judge Sandy always likes me, because, I hate to say, like, I'm, because I'm not ever, like, too lean, yeah, <laughs> I've been too lean one time, um, and that's a whole other topic I kind of wanted to talk about today that some people know about, some people don't, but we'll get to it if, when, if it comes up. Um, yeah. I had a coach just completely make me like emaciated before, but um, that's the difference than being too lean. That was just complete, like, just, ugh, that was horrible. But I never really am too lean. Uh, so I, she tends to like that a little bit more full look. Uh, and I don't know if that really answers the question, but I think it was just, yeah. I didn't really, I wasn't really missing any pieces like there wasn't like oh but you had your um you know maybe like oh but you know maybe you're you you do not have any calves or this or that or everything was good but your hair or your makeup was too light or you know just there wasn't really anything so I mean I don't know if that sounds conceited or whatever but they no. didn't really get it I didn't really get any negative feedbacks for that show um I don't know that's that great it. Yeah, no, you definitely did. And I'm absolutely going to get into your experiences with coaches for sure. So we can hear that. Um, I wanted to know if you ever had any shows that you feel like you shouldn't have done because you did say you were really exhausted oh. going into USA's. Yeah, it was like, like I said, I mean, I could tell my body was like, and my coach too, and we both knew like, as soon as that show was over, some people like I 
some people know, some people don't, but I went ahead and did the Tampa Pro the next week just for fun because I was already going with my boyfriend at the time, or he's still my boyfriend, but boyfriend <laughs> at the time, we already had plans, and um, I uh, was like, oh, you know what, I know my body's going to kind of look a little watery and tired and kind of trash, but I sort of don't care because I worked so long to get to the IFBB Pro League, I want to check it off and say that I've done an IFBB show. If I get hit by a bus next week, I'm doing an IFBB show. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, we're just going to do it. And, you know, it'll be great. I got like fourth call outs or fifth call outs. I don't remember, but it was something really, I knew I had no expectations. I did not care. I knew a lot of the girls that were about to go to the Olympia were going to be at that show. Like, I literally just did it for fun. But besides that, my coach and I decided we're like, as soon as you are done, like it is immediate break time. Like it is immediate break time because I had been pushing myself so hard since like, I guess March of this year. And um, yeah. Uh, so as far as shows I wish or probably should not have done uh, probably that show Tampa probably didn't need to happen, but I really just wanted to do it. Cause I was going to be there anyways. And I was like, I want to see what I can do. And it just, I, fl- I flew all over the country that week basically for work and stuff. And it was just, Wow. It was bad. bad. But it was still super fun. I don't care. Um, But I, uh, I would say probably a couple times, especially earlier on, I would want to just keep going and going kind of like, like, not really similar to what you said. Um, Like how you said you kept going the next week. I'm talking like, I'd want to do like, okay, well, then in three months, we'll do this one. And then I didn't really know much about how the body responded, needed time to repair, worked. Like, I didn't really know a lot. So I there's, yeah, definitely a handful of shows that I shouldn't have done. It's, there's one I'm thinking of in particular, probably like three times I've done shows. Where I'm like, dang, why the heck did I do that? Um, one show in particular, I remember it was right after I won that overall I talked about earlier. And then a couple months later, I decided – oh, I'm going to try to clean things up for the next um, four weeks and do this other show. Uh, just, I don't know why at the time. I didn't think about back then strategies for nationals or turning pro. I was still just only regional. Like I didn't even think that big yet because I wasn't in that pond. So I was like, I just really want to do this uh, other show in, in uh, Nashville. So I kind of crash dieted for it. And yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> Did you pay for that after? <laughs> I, I, uh, I still did. I think I still got like there or something in open, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, it just set up for a bad, you know, rebound, of mm-hmm. course. Like I, it was right before the holidays too, which is, I don't, I hate that they have nationals right, right before Thanksgiving for some of my friends. I'm like, I did it last year. It's hard going into the holidays right after a show. Um, yeah. And then after, I mean, I was eating like, yeah, I mean, I've gone through the whole eating like crazy or what people like to say eating like an asshole and then you know trying to make up for it in other ways and then going back and doing the whole binging and you know purging and all that kind of stuff I think that's when I struggle with that the most was between those shows and like after that show uh because I shouldn't I shouldn't have done it why did I think I had to do a show I just wanted overall I probably should have just taken a break but I just wanted to do more so got that hunger you know Mm mm-hmm Yeah, I definitely, I understand that I ignored a lot of my body's cues in 2000, well, 2018, because I just wanted to keep going and I don't regret it at all. Um, I learned a lot about myself and a lot about my body and my needs. Um, But now I've I've been able to grow from that, which is good. And I'd love to know from your perspective, what helped you to get to know your body more over the years and make the adjustments necessary, as well as knowing when to go hard and when to slow it down and maybe step away for a little bit. I uh, definitely learned, I would say, I guess in yeah, I guess, wait, let's see. Yeah, 2018. Uh, I learned a lot about my body's like negative, um, like, I guess, signs or uh, things that, yeah, I guess negative signs whenever I know like things are going a little too far or something like that. Um, because of what I was mentioning earlier, this coach that I had previously who kind of ran me into the ground, I uh, like noticed my digestion turns horrible like not just like can't go but it's like you know stomach pains like you get lots of bloating whenever I start to get a lot of bloating I used to always think that that when I was younger 
I didn't really know what being bloated meant, but like after being so dieted down and I would eat something, one thing like that was different than, you know, like a brand of something different than the brand I was eating for the last few weeks or, you know, something so tiny, it would cause such amounts of pain and craziness. Um, for me, my digestion is a huge factor. If I cannot sleep soundly, like I always sleep. So if I start to notice that I'm waking up a bunch of times or having a really hard time falling asleep, uh, waking up, you know, just multiple times throughout the night, that's not a good sign for me uh, Mm -hmm. either. And then I can also tell if I wake up and I'm extremely like, like just dead still after sleeping nine or 10 hours, like we need to take, I'm, I used to always say no, no rest days, whatever, take rest days. That's crazy. You get more (laughs) out of resting than you do if you're pushing yourself like past this point. So I don't know, digestion and sleep. And then also like, if you start tallying, tallying it up and you're like, Six, seven hundred milligrams, eight hundred milligrams, thousand milligrams of caffeine. Oh, like I mean, shoot, I've been there so many times. Like you can't even function without, you know, tons and tons of coffee. Like you need to. Re- I don't know. I, I don't think I let myself get to that point again. Like I didn't do that this year. It's like you need to pull back on the diet or slow things down and just kind of wait for a show because, like, that is so. There are so many negative connotations or um, effects from so much extra caffeine is like you cannot have a good night's sleep if you've been overstimulated all day unless you're doing certain things to like combat that which most people don't really even know what to do they just like try to like lay down and sleep that just makes for bad sleep um all different types of stuff Definitely. I don't know. those are the things I can think of yeah yeah I like that I think that's um, insightful for anybody and then when I know when to push harder it's like you need to be a, you need to be pretty tough I mean I feel when you're kind of given 100 percent for prep, like in prep, like I just can tell, like there's a difference between am I actually pushing myself or am I just kind of doing, you know, I don't know. I, just to me, there's just like an energy level. If I feel super great and awesome all day, every day, like for me, and this may sound really bad and maybe I just need to find the right thing, but if I feel super great and awesome all day, every day, like 100% being honest with myself, then I'm not going hard enough. Like I need to have times in the day where I'm like, Ooh, that was pretty tough. Like I'm kind of sore. I'm tired. Like, you know, you need to be pushing your body. So that's just, that should be maybe like the, maybe that's bad advice. <laughs> that's just like, I myself. tend to that's agree with you. Yeah. Like if you're too comfortable and everyone's like, Oh, this prep is so great. I haven't been hungry at all. And I'm like, okay, that's not, I'm not sure if that's a good sign. Like, you know, because like, are you, le- you know, are you ready? I'm just saying you have to go through some discomfort to get to the end result. So if I don't feel discomfort, then I'm like, all right, I can do more. Yeah, definitely. I think there's like um, adaptations we experience as athletes too, or progressions we have as athletes where then, you know, maybe it doesn't feel as challenging because our perception of it has changed or because we've increased our tolerance to it. But then- the point too. Yeah. Th- but then that brings the question up of, like you said, like, am I really pushing myself? Like if you're doing, let's say you're doing hit on the treadmill and then like you've been doing it for like three weeks and you're starting to realize like you're not breathing as hard. Like on one hand, you Correct. might celebrate that, you know, oh, my endurance has gotten better. But on the other hand, you should be going, wait, I should be now pushing level or m- let's say 10 mile per right. hour or 12 right. rather than right. 9.5, 9, right. whatever it is. Like it kind of needs to suck a little. I'm sorry. Like it, it. That's how I know I'm working hard enough. It's like, dang, that was hard. And if it's not, then I'm like, eh. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I feel that's like a trigger for me. It's like to know, like to know for sure that, yeah, it was tough. And I'm yes. struggling a little bit. A couple times throughout the day, I'm just comfort, you know, uncomfortable. Then that's how you know. But that's my answer to that question, I guess. I like it. Yeah. No. Definitely. Like it doesn't have to suck on the level of I don't want to do this, but it has to. It has to breed some sort of new version of you. Mm Hmm. So let's talk about your coach. Your experience of that coach. I want to know about the bad experience or maybe experiences that you've had, um, and kind of like how that's influenced you as an athlete as well as as a coach yourself. Totally. So I won't go through my whole entire coaching history because I mean, basically I've had a handful <laughs> of different ones. Um, 
but I started out with someone who was a little, you know, just kind of smaller and definitely got, helped me get my, you know, my roots in the sport, like going and it was great and I was thankful for it. But I was like, all right, I'm ready to, I want to be with someone who's going to, you know, want me to get to national, you know, be really excited about nationals and all this kind of stuff. Little, I mean, I didn't really know that much at the time, um, really, but I, uh, long story short, um, the coach that I switched over to sort of messaged me on Instagram, you know, I, I can help you turn pro. I can help you turn pro. Just let me, you know, take charge basically. And I was like, all right, you know, I've been with my other coach for a couple of years, like um, almost three years. And I was like, all right, let's go. Uh, let's do this. And I gave my, all the control over to him. And honestly, I mean, I tell people this, I have posts about it and it's something I will periodically like reshare with people. Um, I, had never taken any type of PEDs or any type of drugs of any kind. Um, so this was a first experience for that for me. So I went ahead and took a dive into that, uh, you know, area. Per their recommendation? What did you say? Per yeah. their recommendation? Oh, yeah. It was like, you, it was like, you, it was, huh, go ahead. Did you know that you were going to, that they were PEDs or did you not know? Um, Half of it. I was like, okay, like, I don't know. I didn't really realize a lot of it was like, I can get this for you. I'll get this for you. And then like some other stuff, it was just like, Oh, like anytime I would ask questions, we'd be like, Oh, it's not a big deal. It's, just, it's not a big deal. And it was kind of, I was kind of reassured that, Oh, it's just not a big deal. Mm. You know, um, I do say, and I will say before I kind of go on this little, you know, there are, I do believe as someone who's, you know, been in this a while now and I've educated myself way more. That was one thing that this whole experience caused me to do was educate myself is there are, you know, people may disagree. There are ways to do certain things without it harming you. Uh, if that's what you choose to do. But at the time I had knew nothing and was being forced to like not ask questions and little did I know, like a lot of the different things. It was just like automatically on my protocol uh, on the, sh the first like sheet that came over with all of my stuff, it was like, not, it was, it was like, not like an option. It was like, this is part of the thing that you're going to do. And when I tried to be like, I don't know if I want to do it. He's like, well, I thought you wanted to turn pro, you know, just that type of language. Mm. I'm like, okay. All right. Well, if you, I'm going to turn pro, then I guess I better do it, you know? And, uh, I really had knew nothing. I got no blood work done. Like I knew nothing. Like I wish I, I learned so much from this experience, but I will say, knowing what I know now, the amount of certain doses of different things that I was on, I'm, I'm talking like if I shared it, it, most people who knew anything about anything like that would be shocked because a lot of the, I mean, it was a little bit of everything, anything to do with your thyroid, anything to, you know, um, fat burners, there's um, anabolics, there was um, all different kinds of stuff on this protocol list. And I had no thyroid problems previously. I had no anything. I'd never taken anything to do with that. I had no idea what an irregular dosage would be for any of that. So this prep was probably 20 weeks long um, to get ready for my third national show with this guy. And let's just say like by the time, like right now on stage, when I won my pro card, I was 123. And off season right now, I'm like over 140. Okay. So I've been trying to put on some new tissue. But for me, at that point, I was 106. Like I got down to 106 pounds. So for me, that is freaking tiny like if you saw me you would be and I got a slew of messages after the show uh, for 20 weeks I was doing I'm not gonna say either there's no place for doing two hours of cardio at times like I have been that person like I've done it um I've never truly prescribed that to people but hey I'm not gonna knock it I've done more I did some more than that this year at a certain point um but that's just because I'm crazy but <laughs> but I was doing two hours on the stairs consistently for like for at least for five months like I don't know forever because I started prepping November December that year and the show was in May so by the time the show came I literally looked like a skeleton after that show three weeks later there's a post I can post again um or send to you if you want to see yeah, it. Send it it's 35 pounds or 37 pounds three weeks later of just oh, oh another thing anti-estrogens and I know there's a place for that in times but this was like a the amount of stuff I was on was the amount for like not even a 300 pound bodybuilder would take is like wow. insane amounts. So I literally this year after I got done um, with my season, I came off my, I had to get on hyperthyroid medicine. Um, after that prep, I had to work on getting my period back for like months and, months and months and months and months and months and months, like nine months. I lots and lots and lots of things. Um, 
that I learned what not to do, which I think can really help you in learning what to do. Uh, because now, now I know my body and it gives me different signs, uh, about like stress. If it's stressed out, like I can tell, like I'll get bloated. I have a hard time sleeping. I, you know, all the things I mentioned previously, um, I posted it and I wrote it, everything in there about the stuff that, you know, protocol, you know, um, supplements, drugs, all those things. I said I was over, or over cardio, over dieted, over trained for like 20 weeks. Like I didn't ever put the coach's like name in it, but a lot of people knew who it was. And I, uh, I mean, honestly, it was so bad afterwards. Like it could have been a career ender for sure. Like, wow. I mean, it was a whole, it was a very bad re- like, I don't know if anyone can understand the gravity of it if they, unless they saw a picture of me during that. So now, like, I don't even look like me. <laughs> like, yeah, send I, my, me that because you know, I'll link it in the show notes. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. And I got, a, like, an onslaught of slew of people, like, reaching out to me afterwards, just being like, holy crap, like, I'm so glad you're okay. Like, I wanted to talk to you before, but the show was coming up, and we've all been, like, worried about you. Like, it was a really big deal. So that was sort of, like, my launching point um, into – I feel like kind of, all right, like knowing when to say no. Like even my coach this year, there's a couple times where he'd be like, well, what do you think about this? I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do no carbs or nope, I'm not going to do this or that. And so we would have to chat things out. So like, I know, I tell people all the time, ladies, like say no to things and ask questions. Don't let any coach make you feel like, hey, I'm in charge of, you know, yes, they're in charge of your body, but you actually are in charge of your body. They don't have to live in your body and you pay them okay you pay them that's what I have you know to tell people all the time I'm like just remember that they you know you know you're the boss so if you feel something is off and terrible and you feel like you are gonna pass out on the stairs like I used to like you need to stop that is not okay it doesn't make you more badass or hard it makes you dumb and maybe not even dumb but just it's unsafe. Like, so I did not realize that I didn't want to talk to anybody about what was going on. I literally pushed myself into the ground. Um, My hair was falling out. I got so skinny, so small, like I'm talking like beyond any, like, I can't even imagine it now. I can't even believe that that was me. And um, so yeah, for me, it was a huge comeback and all this stuff. Like I tried to go do another show in Miami later that year. I was like, this is my comeback. And I ended up getting 12th. Like I was, that was to me also a good win because I felt like, okay, that thing didn't beat me. I'm still able to get back on stage, but really that was stubborn. I should have taken some more time to rebuild my, you know, makeup after that. But I don't know if I'm just kind of rambling, but basically I I think, I think everyone should like realize like, yes, they're coaches, but also like you are like, you're in charge of your body. Like, you don't, I don't know. I don't want to say you don't have to do what your coach does because I'm also a coach, but like talk to them. Advocate like, for yourself. Them. Yeah. Like if you feel really bad and that's also comes with experience, like knowing the difference between what feels too bad and what feels bad enough to where you're like, yeah, I'm doing work. <laughs> There's a huge difference. Um, I mean, I was a walking like corpse. Like I was walking around on like caffeine, and fat burners and stuff all the time so that's not a good place to be like and work stuff work suffered all kinds of stuff suffered so it's just I don't know if that's good advice or whatever but I'm sure I'm sure Celeste you've talked to other people that have experienced stuff like kind of similar to this Mm -hmm. um yeah it's dangerous but yeah I guess I can just say do your research and make sure that when you talk to a coach that you know uh kind of what their their uh style is um, if you're someone who really doesn't know a lot, like I didn't know a lot at that time, uh, that probably wouldn't have been the best coach for me. Uh, not really someone who wants to answer a bunch of questions. Like I could have seen it. And now I, now I barely ask my coach anything cause I know what's up. Right. Um, but at the time I didn't, and I just said yes to everything. Well, I want to win. He told me promise that I could win. And you know, that's when I kind of lost a little bit of the point of why I was doing it for that that whole year. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was hard. It was really hard to come back from, but I don't know. That's all. (laughs) 
Do you have any, I I have so many questions now that come to my mind. I guess first question would be when you first took what was given to you in your protocol, did you have a thought in your mind that was like, don't know if I should, or was the thought in your mind influenced by what your coach said of, don't you want to go pro? Oh, no, no. At first I did not. I said, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And we went back and forth about it. And it was like diminished to me. Like, Oh, uh, I see. It's not a big deal. deal. Stop freaking out. It's not even a big deal. And there's other stuff. I mean, like even later in that, um, I don't know if anyone knows, like, or people that listen, some people don't know what there's other super dangerous fat burners that are like, like, I don't know, have they been illegal since 1930s, like some really bad ones that he ended up having me take too. And he had other girls on it. We all ended up leaving after, I mean, it was horrible. Um, no, I knew it was wrong. I didn't really, I always used to say I didn't want to do it, anything. And uh, my husband at the time, I didn't tell him at first because oh, I was wow. so worried about what he'd say. And so it ended up being a big point of contention later, like, a, you know, a couple weeks after I ended up telling him and he was like, you know, yeah, no, it was all bad. Everything about it was bad feelings. Now, if I would have educated myself and knew what I was doing and had someone that would be willing to like explain it to me, give it to me as an option, uh, I maybe could have talked to, you know, my husband at the time and said, here's what I've learned. What do we think? You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It could have been differently, but it wasn't. There's a reason it happened the way it did. And obviously I'm no longer with him, but I just meant I was hiding it from him. Is he and- still a coach? Uh, this guy, uh, he ended up leaving the team or he ended up being asked to leave the team that I was on before. Uh, I think he's still a coach on his own, but I don't, I don't know how the reputation is. I kind of don't associate myself with that anymore, but I, uh, yeah, I try not to. If people ask me what, who that coach was, like, remember that time you got real skinny? Like who was, and I will tell them proudly, but I don't want to blast. I'm not going to blast them on this No, thing. I wouldn't want you to um, blast them on no, 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 I know. I know you don't, but I'm just saying, <laughs> I, at the time, I, especially right after that. I mean, that, I, I want to know, but oh, I, mean, <laughs> I don't want to put anyone that. on blast. No, no, I will tell you, I'm definitely not. Um, anyone who knows me will also know. I just run my mouth about whatever. I'm <laughs> not run my mouth, but like, I'm an open book. Ask me whatever you want. And I'll tell you, like, you didn't ask me about any of that stuff just now, but yeah, it's a thing. A lot of people just kind of shove under the rug. Like let's all pretend that every, no one's doing any PDs and everyone is not having problems after a show with reversing, whatever. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all a problem um, unless you educate yourself. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing all of that. Uh, Audra actually told me that you were, you were an open book and she's like, you got to ask her about, um, and she told me and we'll get into it, but about your relationship and stuff like that. And <laughs> just the, the things yeah. you've shared even just so far are really, I think, imperative. And although I don't talk about them on the show so much because I'm personally fearful and have been told things about, you know, I just don't want anyone's reputation or things about the industry. I want to always keep it in positive light, but it is important. Of and uh, of course, as part of my mission with the post show blues, and of course, the mentality behind competing in general, a healthy relationship with food, all of those are the types of things that are under the rug that I love pulling out and being like, let's uh-huh. take a look at it, let's clean it. But this is something I don't have experience in. And it's nice to hear a perspective like you come on and say this and I had a girl message me uh not too long ago and she was like I was unknowingly on them and so her voice yeah her voice changed and she and I don't think she'll I'm not saying her name obviously but her voice changed and she was like I can't I can't like I fight if my parents found out I'd be kicked out and she thought that her mom was probably skeptical and all this stuff but I was like that is so sad that she had no idea it was very much so they met in person they they were like just take this you know there was no education or knowledge oh there's a lot of that a lot of that which shocks Um, don't worry about it it's 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 this it's this and uh, at the time like you're so blinded by your desire to be successful and win that you're just like okay like he listed out the the names of the different things and everything that things were but this is how I mean I didn't even really take a lot of time to google much of it I was just like all right I mean I'm paying you a bunch of money and you're you know you're professional 
Okay. But if you see people in a positive light, like, and you're not quick to see some negatives in people, like you always want to see the no, good. No, I'm not. I'm super, mm-hmm. super like, la di da da. Like, I'm always like really, 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 uh, um, I don't know. I think it's gotten me into bad situations like this, but I always think, <laughs> I assume the best in people. I'm always like, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like, naive or something I guess it's about people's intentions or anything I'm just like yeah this is great everything's great and oh I mean it, you know of course he's not going to do anything he knows what he's doing he's not going to do anything to hurt me but it got down to it um where we just I, I don't understand why we just kept pushing and kept pushing like there's a place we could have stopped and reversed into the show like five or six weeks out five or six weeks off from that show everyone was like holy crap like this is the best and I will say no it looked really great but then it took a turn and it just yeah like was like whoa okay now you're like borderline like look like a cancer patient like very Mm -hmm. bad like it was not healthy it looked like I had yeah didn't look like myself so I'm just saying there is a place during our coaches week on this episode on this show uh one of the actually I think a few mentioned it but one I can remember off the top of my head specifically said this was from Ryan Hinton he said oh I love Ryan oh well then good (laughs) He's yeah, he's cool. He was like coaches who are going like fishing for clients, like and are like saying, you know, sliding in girls' DMs, like I can make you a pro, like come be with me, you need a pro coach, that kind of thing, are probably coaches you'd want to avoid anyways. And so I think for people listening who maybe are looking for a coach, like don't fall for the trap. I think it's really unethical personally for any coach I agree. to you know, convince you to do certain things for it. By tapping into a de- de- bleh, a deep desire within you, in order to influence your behavior, that is in a uh, let's say less than productive way, in a way you're not aware of or educated on, etc., is super unethical and should not be done. And I wish there were standards for that in the industry. I know some girls have come on here and said like they expressed to Sandy what happened and um, Sandy like got on them about it. And um, so I think, you know, that's, that's the best you can do if you go through a negative experience, you know, be open about your experiences and share and make sure you can help other yeah. others. Right. And I know seeing a little kind of, I wasn't really going like, I was kind of going around in little circles a little bit, but it did, it wasn't like yesterday anymore. So I haven't talked about it in a while because it's, I've kind of gotten past it, but I do, and especially during that time, I was posting, like, a lot about it because of this exact reason, exactly what you just said, not a lot of girls or people will talk about, um, you know, certain things like that that'll happen, and it needs to be, it needs to be talked about. It doesn't have to be negative. Like you said, I'm always really positive, but it's it's the reality. I mean, the industry can be, there are dark sides. Um, There are places that are kind of like, okay, I need to know what to avoid and like certain things to look for that are not good. Like I don't, I totally a thousand million percent agree. If someone's like, I can turn you pro, I can turn you pro. Like they probably aren't really going to, they're probably not worth your time because if you really are a good coach, a you'll put out some good content and you'll put your, let your results speak for themselves and people will come to you. Um, the other thing is uh, like you said, kind of tapping into that deep desire and all that stuff. I felt I was after looking back I felt like I was being completely taken advantage of I felt violated yeah. um it sounds weird because yeah no, I'm an adult I did it I did the things I totally have to accept responsibility but at the same time you're at the same time you're so vulnerable to you're, when you're so driven you're so vulnerable to anything that you think is going to help get you there and oh well I guess this is what you have to do um, when no one talks about it, so I don't know. I mean, maybe this is what they're all doing. You know what I mean? So yep. it's, uh, yeah, you have to, it's kind of like a the pastor I listen to in podcasts all the time, um, Andy Stanley. He's always like, it just feels like someone's tapping you on your shoulder. If you feel a little gut check, mm-hmm. you need to pay attention to it, especially with your body and anything, um, you know, in the industry with your, I guess, I don't know like intuition and kind of your instincts try to pay attention to it kind of look into it say why am I thinking this is a why am I second guessing this why am I thinking about this again why um does that not feel right there's probably a reason if it feels a little icky it's probably because it is exactly 
I always mm -hmm. teach my client, well, not always, it depends on the client situation, but a lot of the, one of the principles I love to teach my clients about is decision making and understanding. Um, if you're about to make a big decision in your life or even a small decision, write down everything that went into that decision because once you make it, in six months down the road, you can reflect on that piece of paper or that document on your computer where you wrote down everything that it went into that decision making and you can see where there may have been gaps in your self awareness or understanding or education that now you have gained experience from and then you can apply that moving forward by seeing okay if these were my gaps in my decision making before now I know moving forward this is what I can do better and what you said about the intuition. I always think about, um, you know, in Snow White, when the the evil witch comes out with the apple and she's like, my precious. And she's like, oh, yes, God. exactly. <laughs> Snow White's kind of like, oh, this is a little strange. But yeah, it makes sense. Like, I'm going to have the Like, okay, that's where she should have been like, this is weird. This is no Seems a little too yeah. good to be true. I don't know. Where did this shiny red apple come from in this dark, gloomy place? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's that's a key determining factor for a lot of us. And um, there's been uh, people who know me know I'm super passionate about psychology and um, it's what I majored in and now I'm getting my clinical mental health counseling degree. But what I'm going to say with this is that there's been studies about how like the person we are in like this heightened state, whether that's like being hot headed or being super driven or motivated or kind of like tunnel vision is very different than mm -hmm. the version of us that's just like functioning sanely at a normal kind of baseline, almost like a mental homeostasis. Um, right. And that's so, a good way to put it. Thank you. I know it just kind of came to me. I was like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> so it's, I was like, yes, okay, TM trademark. Um, no, right. just <laughs> but I think of it like like that in the sense of be aware of where you're at mentally. Are you in a place of normal homeostasis thinking, or are you in a place of heightened level of thinking? I can reflect now on my. Um, previous seasons ago I was in a heightened state of mind and my coach brought me back down to reality I'm lucky to have such an amazing coach and I'll always say that and I believe in it and I also know there's people out there who will trash talk other coaches who other people put on a pedestal but that's besides the point um what I'm getting at right. is that sometimes we need we need to have a trusted source we can go to who can bring us back to a level of reality and someone who we can trust and so I think when you look into hiring a coach or when you're talking to different coaches I would ask them about their protocols. If they're not even willing to share like their perspectives on different types of training or different types of approaches to competing, then I don't know that they're going to be a trusted source moving forward. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I feel that like you have to be willing to at least share something to make the person feel comfortable so that they can know exactly kind of what they're getting into. If it's one of those things where like, nope, you can't even peek behind the curtains until you pay me. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I will say this and people might disagree, whatever. There is no one right way. There is no, like, n like no coaches, like protocol is like, oh my God, this is a magic compared to another coaches. Like, as far as like traditional diet and cardio, I mean, we all know there has to be a diet and cardio, but some may work magically better for others. I just think it depends on the person. I don't think that one coach is like, has their secret formula. They're like, you know, I just don't think that that exists. I think it's all conditional based on each person. So yes, yes I totally agree that like someone has to share, like someone has to be willing to at least share, like, here's what I typically do. Is this something you're comfortable with? Like, let's talk it out. It's not like they're going to take it and try to make their own thing out of it and sell it to somebody. Right. You know, I, I, some people take it so seriously. Um, and I know, understand that's their livelihood, but at the same time, it's not enough to like steal and go make a whole program off of. You can at least share with me your general, um, you know, your guidelines or outline your kind of, uh, your thought process behind your plans yeah that's just me I mean I don't mean to say that there aren't any amazing coaches I just meant like not one over another has like some secret thing the other one doesn't know about they all know they all have different ways you know what I mean they right. all have uh similar things and it's just how they apply it how they communicate and those what what that's those are separators I feel um between coaches is really more like 
them, the person, not yes. like the actual protocol. Yeah, exactly. My coach, Joe DeShulo and Ingrid Romero, they came on and um, they also had their own podcast. And I remember they said like, there's only so many ways like you can train a bikini girl. You know, like there's only so many ways you can train a bikini girl to create a certain body or program. So sometimes people go like, oh, it's the same plan, but it's not, you know, there's slight differences. There's important differences. Um, but it's also important to know, like, there isn't a magic pill I'm going to give you that's different from maybe someone else, but the approaches might vary. And a lot of the coaches who came on, like, let's say Paul Revelia, he came on and talked about this too. Like he had a specific approach with his clients and then he kind of evolved with that approach over time because he he realized like, okay, it's some girls may need this instead of that. And I think that that's what also contributes to a really good coach is understanding like what you said is that it's conditional based on the person. And I think that's definitely a marker of a good coach as well. And like, I don't want to shift into your experience in um, training and improvement seasons, because something I love about you is how comfortable you are and real you are about gaining fat in an improvement season. Um, so I'd love to know if you've ever struggled with body image or seeing your body change. Cause you did mention that's something that, you know, competitors go through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1000%, 1000%, <laughs> uh, definitely do. I mean, I would lie to you if I said that even like today or any day, if I walk past a mirror, like in my bathroom, when I first wake up, I'm going to look, you know, uh, different stuff like that is, is just a habit that have come from looking for progress so many months of the year every day you know, when you're in prep. Um, but it's definitely, definitely, I'm in the best place I've ever been mentally about where my, like, gaining some extra body fat ever. Like, this season, I have been 1,000% focused on training really hard and um, loving it and getting stronger. That's because I just never really have, I don't know, I've never really learned how to, tr- like, there's different levels, and I think I'm I'm training with some like I'm training with a girl who's one of my best friends. Um, she's a figure girl. I've been training with her. She totally makes me feel like a little weakling, but it's really fun to train with someone who's a little bit stronger than you. And I've been um, the guy that I'm dating. He's like big power, like big uh, power lifter, bodybuilder, all that stuff. So he uh, he will train me, and then I've got a couple other um, resources here, like in North Carolina that I've been training with. Uh, they're like friends of ours, but. Uh, team decon uh kevin and cornelius both mm-hmm. uh kevin's been training me they uh i've just been really stepping up my training and so the focus has not been on like my like leanness really uh i think it's also has to do with where i'm at um in life like i'm pretty happy right now so that's it's just not really something that's nagging at me uh i also i've been just so focused on growing my booty even more my back those are the mm-hmm. two things i keep talking about I'm like growing my glutes and my back i'm gonna get some more width and i'm gonna get some more depth in my my butt um you have to gain that to get to that point i mean a lot of people every year i've come back with like almost like i feel where i look at the pictures i'm like dang that looks like not a, a totally different body but like wow that's an improvement because i hear the judges will say like tyler Manion at nationals last year was like you need to bring up your upper body and while I'm over here walking around thinking I'm super jacked (laughs) he's still like no you need to bring up your body and a lot of people I would tell that to were like that's crazy but I did it and it worked and then now I know to be competitive at a pro level like my glutes are fine like I'm proud of them they used to be nothing and now there's something so I'm proud of them but there needs to be more density more depth to them more I just know what their expectations are. So that's been something um, I've been focused on. I just want a little bit of wider back to make my waist look even smaller. And I just like a big back because I think it's awesome. So, awesome. so those are things I've been focused on. Yes, I want a big back. And I may, I've talked about this too. There may be a day one day where I decide I want to do figure and I, I may be out grow bikini, but that's not going to be anytime soon. Uh, I definitely have struggled with body image problems. Um, it runs in my family. My, I actually have a twin sister who's suffered with different eating disorders throughout her entire life. It's still a struggle that she's got um, pretty severely, uh, even today. So I'm always really cognizant of that. And I know that it can, it might appear a rear its head in different forms for me. So I have to be really, 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 really careful with it. Um, You know, if that makes sense. Like I just very Mm -hmm. in tune with like making sure I don't let it go to that place. Uh, yeah, after every show, I would say the first couple months is really hard uh, for me mentally to look at myself. I'm like, I'm fat. And of course, we all do that. I'm fat. 
I'm fat. Oh gosh, I'm fat. And then really it's like, if a normal I think anytime a normal person has ever heard me say that, they look at me like I have three heads. Like, right. what are you talking about? Like, you sound like an insane person. But I really do have to look at it from their point of view because one, less than 1% of the people in the country are competitors. And that's not normal to hear coming out of someone's mouth when people are would like die to look like you or I or anyone who's remotely in this realm like you know most people Mm -hmm. Americans were like oh my gosh I could never get that so I've had to really just put in perspective like okay it's fine I still look fine and um it's I mean it's still it's taken five years to get to this point where I'm at now so for people who think oh it's never gonna get better it can you just have to accept that there are different phases and that to build muscle and size and make improvements the judges want or for your life like for my life goals I just want a big back because I do yeah. I, I uh, want to look like an action figure. I, uh, it takes, it takes a caloric surplus. I, I know you can do it slower, but, and goes, you know, re- with your reverse. I've just never really been good at that. I don't know if I ever will be 100% sticking to a perfect reverse all the way through. Like, I just don't know. I, I obviously haven't done that. I do it the way I know best to do it. Um, I will slowly kind of reintroduce foods and then I just go all in. So to upping my food and just seeing where my body lands. I also, this season, this off season really wanted to get off my hypothyroid medicine that was caused by that prep a couple of years ago. Uh, so I dropped it right after I turned pro. So uh, I was taking levothyroxine and I got off wow. of that. So I will say a, a little bit of the extra body fat again this season was probably from that. Um, my thyroid kind of regulating, but at the same time, no, I was, eat, I was eating on the weekends. But like I would, I strategize or kind of structured my cheat meals, or if you didn't want to call it that, my food that I was eating, burgers, mm-hmm. whatever, around before and after uh, glutes and legs and before and after back. Like I was doing, I wasn't just eating around the clock, like, right. a, big, like, a, like a big, I was just kind of like eating clean during the week, trying to get my carbs up because they were like nothing before. Uh, so trying to get them up to a place and just kind of seeing where I leveled off. And then once I found that spot, I was like, all right, now we can start growing more. Uh, feeding myself more so I uh, I've kind of done this off season by myself and then with my help of my uh, my dude (laughs) uh, I will talk to my coach but he's like I trust you I know you know what you're doing Uh, and when I sent him check-in pictures I just started prepping again like a week and a half ago maybe cleaning it up a little bit I know know. it's kind of like I like I'm dipping my toe in to see if I really I'm ready uh, yeah. he's like, Oh, I'm not even, things are fine. I'm not even mad. He's like, you obviously put on some good size and your structure, your structure and shape is still great. So good job. I'm like, thanks. But yeah, a lot of people you look amazing. Want- oh, thanks. You're welcome. Oh, thanks. Uh, but I want to, a lot of people think that they want to, uh, or need to, they think that they have to. And, and honestly, this is probably what works for us people sending check-in pictures to your coach every single week, even off season. Yes, that is seriously very valuable. But since I know kind of my tendencies that run in my family, and I'll also say this, um, I wanted to see if I could do it without any reason to do it. Like, to see if I could, like, yes, like, just be accountable to myself. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, it does. I didn't want to do it for someone else. Like, just to, oh, I do have to send uh, Shane pictures. I can't eat this. Right. Okay, that's, I don't want that to control me. And then another thing, and I told my friend Catherine, I would say this on the podcast. So I was like, I didn't weigh any food this whole prep. <laughs> you didn't? I, no. <laughs> wow. I was like, I know. I was like, I do not want to be a slave to this dang scale. I was like, I am not weighing a cucumber. Um, so I have never like, weighed a green item in my life. Do not weigh a green item, people. They're, do not do that. I can't. Um, I just don't I, get it. No, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. Like, do not weigh your cucumbers. Oh my God. But I had coaches used to have make me do that. So I was like, I know, I mean, of course I would measure like my muscle leg, uh, uh, shameless plug, muscle leg. Uh, <laughs> I'm a muscle leg athlete, but I know Super I would weigh yummy. my muscle. Leg. I mean, uh, I would do my, uh, you know, measure on my muscle leg in the morning, but I would just put in my shaker. I would have prepackaged oats. Like I know how much is in that. My rice is already portioned out in those little cups. Like I know how much is in that and rice cakes. So like, Everything else, like I did not weigh anything. Like I did not use a, t- you know, like measuring spoon for like. Uh, 
said no, but I told him later. But like every time I would go in and check it, it would be within like point one or two. Like, you know, like I just didn't like it would be pretty much on point. And um, I mean, obviously, when it got a little closer to the show, I would weigh my like fish and just like make sure I had enough because fish can trick you. You'll think you have enough, and then it's really like you need a bunch more. But um, yeah, same I with want, chicken. I, yeah. 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 So I would, I would keep myself on in check all the time and check it, but I have literally, I hate that feeling so much of like, I love being disciplined, but I also want some mental freedom. Of, I can't explain it. I was like, I can do this without having to weigh every single item because I've been doing this for long enough and pressed so many meals over the years. Like I can do it. And I was, I did. And I would always check in. He was right. But I'm just saying, I want, I'm kind of proud of that. Yeah, you should be. There, there's like, I'm sure there's a lot of athletes listening going, that would make me insane, which I, I get, I know. you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's relatable. I, I understand that. But there's other ones who are like, I do that too. Like we, uh, I think it was Sarah DeVore brought her on. And she said mm-hmm. the same thing. I want to say it was her. Ooh, let's hope so. Um, but anyway, there, there were a few girls who follow more of a intuitive eating style approach to their preps. Obviously yours was still following a plan and just not measuring it out, but it's interesting to hear the different approaches because I think it gives competitors listening a perspective of, Hey, it doesn't always have to look the way it's presented. Yeah. On- it's not all one way. Like I know Like, obviously, I would still make my meals, but, like, I wouldn't – I'm just saying I don't throw every single piece of chicken on my scale because I know what it it looks like. I I really do – and people might want to, like, crucify me for saying this, but, like, 3.5 or 3.7 grams of a chicken breast, what – your body is not going to know the difference. Like, my body doesn't. Some people's might. But for me, I'm like, that is crazy. Like, I know it's being – super precise and yes like I'm not I'm not ever sitting over here just like eating whatever I want no like I was very still making my meals and doing all the stuff and obviously like I had my carbs kind of pre-measured so I knew how much everything was but as far as using my scale every day all day no 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 definitely not so interesting because I definitely mm-hmm. I like to measure my food but I, I noticed I think and I, I thought about this a lot when I like first took time off of competing because I needed to heal my relationship with food and I just like let go of all the rules all the regulations I had, like let's say measuring or weighing everything and I remember thinking to myself like our bodies are they want us to function an optimal level right like our body mm-hmm is adapted to a place where it's not going to, not necessarily going to want us to be in an un or less than optimal place. So like you said, with a 3.7 versus 3.5, I personally, am like, it's going to say 3.5, but at the same time, like if I'm having a piece of chicken, well, I'm having a piece of chicken. And if there was a time in our life where let's say measurements and scales didn't even exist, like let's say there was no such thing what would we be doing to measure it instead? And I'd always ask myself that, like if there's no, if there were no scales and there were no measuring cups, what would we do instead? And it'd probably be like, eyeball it based on like ratios. Like if you're combining with other things like bakers, a lot of bakers who like blind bake, you know, do, um, or yeah. like you would do it intuitively. Okay. Like I'm feeling this much hunger. You'd have that. And if you were still hungry after, then you would have more. And I was thinking like, Imagine if more people took that approach. Now, I think, I think that it, like you said, you might get crucified for saying three point seven. But at the same time, um, no, no, yeah, I'm saying like on a plan, like whenever a coach I see, like they put three point seven five ounces of chicken versus like they could just put four, or they could just put three point five. I'm saying like when I would measure it, and I would like throw it on there because I'm always go for a four ounce. Like I, I don't, I always do four ounces. That's what my plan's always been. A couple of times I've had it be like seven or eight, like I've had tried everything. So don't get me wrong. I've done keto. I've done whatever, but I've done it to where I had eight meals with two ounces. Like I've done it all. But right lately, I'm always just in four ounces of whatever meat it is. And I do just do a bro kind of diet. Even if I do my macros, which I have right now, I still eat the same like five freaking foods. Like I just like chicken yeah. and I like rice and I like almonds. I like avocado. I like egg whites and muscle egg. Um, but I would throw it on there and it would be within, you know, a 0.1 range. Like it would be like, I knew how much four ounces is, but I'm saying when coaches send out a plan, that's like 3.75 ounces of chicken. And so that's where the disorder, 
I don't want to say it's a disorder, but the complete obsession of using the scale comes in because the competitor, the new competitor usually thinks that has, like, I have to get it 3.75 and cut off a little tiny bit to make it 3.75. If it's 3.76, oh my God. Like, you know, or if it's 3.74, it's like way too much. Like, to me, I'm like, that is ridiculous. Like, that's just me. I think that there is some value in having super granular details, but also, you know, didn't your body really tell the difference between 3.75 and 3.5? I don't know. I don't, I'm going to say mine probably can't. Yeah. Me. You know what like triggered the hell out of me one time I saw was like, um, here, like you should use these like tear beads on your scale to make sure that they're perfect. It's like perfectly at zero before you put anything on it. I remember reading that and seeing that and like, they were promoting how much of a better competitor and more intense competitor they were for doing that. No, no. Yeah. I'm, trust me. Ask anybody who knows me, I go hard. Okay. I literally have pushed myself almost to the brink and I will, I'm not afraid to do a bunch of cardio. I'm not afraid to suffer. I'm not afraid to make myself hungry, but I am not, don't know why, don't know where I just came up with this huge thing against like, I'm not going to use this little scale to determine my life. Like I would carry it around with me everywhere for years and so I don't know this year I was like nope but like I did keep it to like test my accuracy and I was always pretty much right so now I'm like I maybe I'll bring it back in the future I don't know because the pro level is a little bit different animal I don't know but for right now I'm like no no I'm good I know how much it is what's you know I don't know (laughs) yeah I'm picking up what you're putting down I got you yeah girl yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and it sounds like also with your experience with your sister, there's probably a correlation as well, just the seeing the different types of behaviors that, you know, can actually mm-hmm. come of that and how yeah. dieting and I can have impact to us. Of, totally, totally. I'm trying all the time to, like, I just don't want any of those things to be the thing that takes me down or ever makes me stop wanting to compete. Yes. Um, if I feel like, like, oh, I hate my body so much, oh, I'm so fat, like, that type of language I've kind of, I still use it. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I do. I'm like, I'm fat right now. Or I always catch myself saying uh, to people, I'm in off season right now. Usually I'm this, this or that. Like I, Hannah DeVore made a really good post. I think it was like today. Today she tagged me in it too. Today, yeah. Where she was like, look, I was calling myself fat in this picture on the left where she looks like a completely athletic, great. Freaking That's amazing. How I, feel. I mean, I, I'm not as lean as the, even that picture on the left that she posted right now, right now, but uh, that's how I walk around and people look at me and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, get out of here with fat. Like, you're not fat. So there's a lot of stuff um, we, I can work on, but the type of language, um, I always think weighing any of the, like, cucumbers, like, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, I try not to weigh myself every day. Even in prep, I'll wait until, like, Friday or my check-in day to do it. Um, sometimes, yeah. We're just getting closer to a show. I'm nutcase. I'll weigh it. I know I'll weigh myself in the morning, weigh myself at night, weigh myself in the morning, weigh myself at night. But that's what has to be done. It is a, a it is a physique sport. But um, yeah. no, I try to take precautions to make sure that that beast of an animal of like eating disorder or body dysmorphia like does not kind of take a like. Right now, I'm an athlete. I just don't ever want it to turn into anything else. And I felt that happening a few other times. So. Oh, everything you're saying is like, um, it's making my fire in my belly grow because it's things I'm so passionate about seeing change in the industry and literally like the main reasons and the main reasons why I'm so committed to what I'm doing, because I think it's so important. Those are the things that can make us, you know, turn competing into something ugly and bad in our life or can turn competing into something that's driven by negative forces. I can personally, honestly say I don't remember the last time I called myself fat and I don't remember the last time I had to check the mirror. And I think that that's coming from practice, you know, like girls listening, if you struggle with your body image, if you're struggling with potentially disordered thoughts about food or constantly thinking about food, know that you can change that because it doesn't have to be your reality for the next 10 years of your life. Lauren was like, I'm not going to be controlled by this scale anymore. You can do the same thing for yourself right now. You just have to be comfortable and confident with the decision to do that. And that comes down with breaking down 
beliefs, um, breaking down barriers that you've created in your mind, breaking down societal constructs or maybe environmental constructs. It comes from being so hyper aware of where those things are actually coming from so that when you do make that decision, you feel really good about it. And then it's going to lead and expose itself or I guess um, express itself more positively in other areas of your life. Like I said, I look at check-in pictures and yeah, I see things that need improvement. I'm still an athlete. I'm still competitive. I still want to freaking kill it, but I'm not going, this looks horrible and I'm so ugly and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like here, here's my body. This is my body I live in and it does the hard work for me every single day. It allows me to train like a freaking animal. And so right. I'm going to freaking appreciate it. And I, yeah. I, I like just went off, but yeah, it, it's, it's yeah. something I'm super it's- passionate about. Yeah, no, that's so true. Like, you have to stop beating up the thing that's making you walk around and do all this stuff. Like, I, uh, you know, I've definitely um, been more down in my body at different times. But right now, I've been getting all kinds of, like, positive, um, not like I need it, but, like, affirmations from people all the time. Like, no, you look like an athlete. Like, you look really, like, you've definitely you know, you look strong, you look this or that. I'm like, thank you. And it's okay to say, thank you. It is okay to just say, thank you so much and not say, oh, but this. Oh, Oh, I was 120 pounds on stage. (laughs) No, right. Oh, like, like, look at me. on. No one needs to know. They don't care. They're just trying to give you a nice compliment. You know what I mean? Like they don't need to know the whole story. Uh, So that's something I've been better about is just saying, thanks, thanks, thanks. And then they'll be like, when's your next show? And, you know, then I'll be like, either I don't know or here it is. Um, so, yeah, thousand percent. And like everything you just said, I'm, yeah, I'm right up there with you. Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing. Like how many people will always ask, like, when's your next show? When's this? And those or, you know, they'll compliment your body. Those are some of the best opportunities to practice bringing like the next level, more loving and accepting version of yourself into your reality and into your being by just practicing your response by practicing how you actually react, because it's an immediate um opportunity to see what comes up immediately like oh but I was once this and they didn't get to see me at that point and da 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 it said like if you know that's what comes up as a norm you now have an opportunity to change that neural pathway or change that immediate thought process into something more positive like thank you so much like you said and all the other things so um I I love that this conversation is like lighting me up and we've gotten into so many different topics and I did want to talk a little bit about posing with you just because you said oh yeah yeah just um I know we've been going on and but I don't care this episode it's it's a long one but it's an amazing one and I'm really proud of it already so um yeah and I'm just mentioning this even though we're recording because I hope people listening like if you've gotten a lot of gold nuggets out of this tag us share this post it on your story because we're covering topics I think people will feel empowered to hear and also feel um, comforted in knowing. So if you can share it, if you've experienced some sort of breakthrough or realization, or just you agree with us, you know, post about it. It's good to get the word out. And there is nothing like having a referral for my podcast. Like when you get more listeners or get more people to listen, it means a lot to me and it helps the show. It helps the community and it just helps us all come together. So that was my little side yeah. appreciation Good, note. thousand percent. And just know like what Celeste just said for anybody that's um you know stay with me and my kind of rambling those long uh it's they're like whatever you're going through and no matter like mentally physically all this kind of stuff with the prep or off season or whatever like there is somebody else there is somebody else who's gone, gone through something similar or you know maybe will in the future so no matter what like you know, sharing it or, uh, you know, if it's something that you feel that it, it, you know, it's been brought to you um, and you had no idea some other people went through it, just know that, just know that like you're not alone. And there's a lot of other, you know, there's a lot of other people that have experienced similar things. So hopefully some of these, some of these topics, like a lot of people don't like to talk about all of it. Some people do, some people don't, but I just feel knowing that other people have gone through similar situations than me, it always makes me feel a little bit more like, oh, okay. It's not just me. Like, I'm not that stupid. I didn't let something horrible happen or, oh, it's not just me. Like, I, you know, I am starting to feel great about my decision with switching to no weighing stuff or, you know, whatever it might be. Like, 
I don't know, maybe hopefully that that's what I want is hopefully that someone can resonate with it. And definitely, you know, yeah, that's, that's all. I believe it. hundred percent. It's going to happen. We're going to get lots of good feedback from this. And like I said, okay. I did want to ask you about posing. Um, oh yeah. You pose wellness competitors, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So has this been a recent thing? How do you pose them differently? Like, why'd you start posing well as competitors? Are you considering wellness? Uh, No, actually, (laughs) I've been getting that question a lot because uh, lately on my story, I've been putting a lot of, um, I would say a lot, but here and there, I'll put different wellness posing, um, like what not to do. Here's what you should do, what what you shouldn't do, kind of what they're looking for and examples of it. Um, obviously I'm a bikini posing coach. I've been, you know, really fortunate to work with some of the best posing coaches over time. And I feel really, really strongly about my posing ability. So, you know, hit me up if you want to talk about bikini too, but with wellness, um, no, I've been spending a lot of time watching videos, researching, talking to people who are training for wellness. Um, and also a lot of friends of mine that are switching to wellness either. I mean, I've got friends switching from women's physique to wellness and friends switching from bikini to wellness. So, I mean, it's going to be a first, and I've been to a couple of different NPC meetings in the Carolinas over here, uh, learning about kind of what the criteria is they're going to be looking at for wellness on a regional level too. And I've, I mean, I've also talked to JM, like, you know, several different folks, like at, at national shows, like when I see them, um, I'll talk to them, uh, different judges. And it's kind of the same across the board. We're all like, well, we're just going to see what happens. We're going to see what comes up. But I've been doing my research to, uh, cause it's coming, it's happening. Um, all there's going to be three national shows that'll have wellness pro cards this year. It'll be junior Nats, junior USA's. And I think they're giving away universe too. Um, they're going to have two classes for each one of those national shows for wellness. It's not going to be a bunch like bikini, but it's going to be like two at each one. And then every, in the Carolinas anyway, um, they're going to be having wellness categories at every show. So for me, I'm like, all right, well, not, I want to capitalize. Yeah, of course my, skill set in my my clientele but also like it is a very similar personality um to bikini so that's where it was a very easy decision for me to start like adding that into my um kind of repertoire um actually hosting a posing clinic with a couple of other folks from the carolinas in january uh when and i'll be featuring wellness but i uh it's really the main differentiator from bikini is that there's two different there's two additional mandatory poses or uh what you what you might want to call is, you can call it a quarter turn or a side pose, uh, but it's really just um, showcasing the hamstring, the quad size, and then the glute, and uh, really that's it on either side. Um, and then the back pose and the front pose are a little different. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's ever seen the traditional IFBB, like European uh, bikini posing from the front and the back, but it looks like that. So it's like one hand on your hip, one hand out to the side. Um, they move their hair in the back to show the back and then they close, they kind of put the hair back. And then in the front, it's one hand on the hip, one hand out to the side. And there's a couple little variations you can do either full front, like toes pointed out, showcasing the quads. Um, you can kind of lean to one hip and kind of put one toe kind of up, which is, um, there's just kind of depends on your body type and how, you know, your, what your waist is looking like and that kind of thing. But the personality, the walking and um, all of that is very similar to bikini. So it was a, it was a pretty easy, you know, thing for me to just want to add into my ba- um, bag of tricks, basically. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that the wellness division looks really amazing. Um, and it's good to know that there are posing coaches who are investing, you know, like you. Actually, I haven't heard of many others, but um, I also don't talk to many of them. So I, I like that you're investing your time into the research and the planning and really understanding what they're looking for. What yeah, girl, you- I've got my whole wellness routine on my <laughs> that I've been doing. I do it in the shower because I'm, I'm like, I'm going to put out videos of like, once I, um, you know, get into the new year and everyone starts prep, I'm going to be putting like, here's a bikini versus wellness, like a lot of videos, more stuff like that. I'm going to really start promoting my posing, um, coaching business a little bit more. I've invested a lot of money into marketing for that too, that I'm about to start launching. So it's like a new deal. Yeah. I mean, now I can put IFBB pro behind it. So that's exciting. So, I mean, I'm yeah. doing it for a long time, but I think I can really take it up a notch and I've gotten some other people to start referring girls to me too. So it's, it's exciting. That is exciting. And I mean, it's pretty awesome because it's something new and it's something that you can capitalize on now and make an impact with and help those girls, especially the ones who maybe are switching divisions to get a good understanding Mm -hmm. of their style there or incorporate it there. Um, You know, there's a lot of girls who are 
considering competing in wellness or are jumping on the idea of it because it's at least how I look at it it's kind of like how the classic division was how the guys who got into it right off the bat are the ones who have oh been yeah for a while correct um, and they will be giving out pro cards this year and of course just like bikini I'm not sure a lot of people may not remember like I mean I was still kind of later to the game like when bikini first started versus in the pros that turned pro then like I mean, I've made, I've talked to uh, different people all the time. They're like, Arnold wouldn't even get top five of the national show these days. So I mean, it's kind of like that. It's like, what, you know, but whatever, you can still say, you know, make that huge accomplishment and get your pro card and then maybe make your name for yourself in the industry, switch divisions. If you ever want to go back to bikini, if you want to go up to figure, like there's all kinds of benefits from going ahead and getting in early. Yeah, you're right. And I mean, it's, it's just an opportunity. So um, what do you think is most important for those girls who are considering getting into wellness to know? Because I'm going to be just straight up and say, I think there's some girls who are like, I'm going to compete in wellness just because they have like bigger yeah. legs. But I'm, yeah, I have yeah. bigger legs. And I know that I couldn't compete in wellness. I don't have the muscle definition. I don't have the muscle maturity. And I definitely so, don't have the look. Sure. Uh, okay, so Correct. I think actually the look they're looking for is a similar as far as uh, hair, makeup, glam, all that stuff is very similar to bikini. So you could potentially look like wellness. It's a little sexy, uh, confident, muscular. But like I said a minute ago, I have a girl who I'm going to start coaching in January who's coming from women's physique okay, right. to wellness. That's She's a pro. But I'm just saying that's the level. I think that's a huge, the biggest misconception is we will see it at the local level. I'm not mm -hmm. going to diss on it, but I've been at all the levels. Now I know what a regional show versus a national show versus a pro show looks like. We're going to see a lot of people who think that their legs won't come down, but really it's not muscle. Does that make, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. there's a lot of people who are like, my legs are just big. Are your legs big or are your quads big? Because there's a difference. Um, yeah. You don't know until you do, until you peel it all back. Uh, the muscle that is required for wellness is a lot. It is not a little bit. It is not like bikini. Anyone who says my legs are a little too big, that is still not wellness. Wellness is a, and by definition on NPC News Online, um, it is the legs are overdeveloped in comparison to the upper body. The lower body development is prominent and the upper body development is, you know, not the main thing we're looking at here. We're looking at very large glutes, um, almost, you know, like imbalanced, I would say is not the right, not the best word, but a little imbalanced with the upper body, um, almost overdeveloped glutes. We have really large quads, um, adductors, hamstrings, calves, all of it. You must like all of the whole lower body has to be extremely muscular. And I'm not talking like big, like it has to have, like you said, the density, the maturity, mm -hmm. um, some, like, again, I'll reiterate someone from women's physique is coming down to that. No, she is not, um, one of the most beefy women's physique girls ever, but she does have a ton of muscle. She is an IFBB women's physique girl, um, but she's also very girly. So a lot of women's physique girls, um, they don't like to wear heels and do, you know, a lot of stuff like that because they wear no heels. She wants more of that. Um, so she's coming down to wellness because she has always been kind of like laying off of her legs because they grow so fast. So just everyone needs to keep in mind, if you think you might be ready for it because you're thighs get thick in the winter time girl that's not the same my <laughs> I thighs mean, if that was thick. true yep <laughs> yeah mine are too right now like about picture I posted the other day everyone's like oh my god you look the part I'm like no it's just because uh just because I got some extra meat on them right now they're not really that big that ain't muscle down, baby so. <laughs> yeah that ain't muscle baby and that's okay but um you can see a little baby line which I was happy about and I feel like I have my legs have grown a smidge but yeah. for the most part no I would not be able to be competitive at, on a pro wellness stage. Like, no. And a lot of people will say, oh, but you have a lot of muscle for bikini. I'm like, yeah, maybe, but still not wellness. I mean, th there's a huge, huge difference between a bikini girl and a wellness person. Like their legs are much more developed. So that's the main difference. I would say people need to understand. Yeah. That. And the condition still has to be there. It has to be appropriate. You don't need to be peeled like a figure. I mean, uh, like a, physique girl might be but the conditioning needs to be similar to in, at least bikini if not figure I mean we're talking still pretty conditioned uh so that's I think that's just a misconception but we'll see it this year kind of unfold definitely I'm gonna go to the one in January at the fit expo in LA um muscle contest is gonna be debuting wellness uh for <gasps> them so <sighs> yeah um, well, actually, I guess by the time everybody hears this episode it'll be like 
15 days out. So maybe some girls listening are competing in that show. We'll all get to see it together. And then, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Like you said, I think, um, especially on the international level, damn, it's going to be amazing to witness. Yeah, I think, um, especially in the U.S., it might take a little bit of time to kind of get the kinks out as far as like, so the main thing is I've been hearing in some of the, in the meetings that I've been to is just like, are we all going to be on the same consistent page judging panel wise? Like, mm-hmm. do we all know? And, you know, do we all agree? Like, are we all going to agree on the same thing? No, because we're not going to at first. I mean, some people, you know, still some judges, even though they've come out and said it multiple times for men's physique, we don't need the biggest guy, but some judges are just prone to, and they said it themselves, like in the meeting, they're like, I just really get impressed by whoever is the biggest. And that's just what I want to pick. Like I, I kind of forget the criteria sometimes and like judges are people too, you know? So they might, it might take them a little time to realize like I need to be judging for exactly what the criteria is, not exactly uh, what I think looks the best. So that's just um, the main differentiator with the, with the wellness because, you know, it is, there is a very specific criteria for it. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, so before we wrap this up, I always love to know, like, what would be your best advice for girls who are thinking about competing? And then what would be your best advice for girls who are on their road to pro? Um, for comp- people who are competing, thinking I would about say it. thinking about competing. People who are thinking about competing, I would say to do your research and understand what are all the possibilities are what I don't want to use the word risks because that sounds kind of negative but in the same way understand what risks are involved will you be you know you may look at your body your potential you could have some type of um, you know different relationship with your body than you do now Um, know that it is a huge there's a big mental shift that has to happen just make sure you do your research and talk to people who've been competing for either a long time, have done a few shows, all different levels, and just kind of make sure you know what you're getting into. And also, no one really talks about this, but research the cost of everything. Because when I first started, I had no idea. When the show came and everything started coming to it, I'm like, dang, this is thousands of dollars. Like, oh my gosh. And I mean, I had no idea that it was like, oh, I need to buy this too. Oh, I need to buy this too. And it can all just add up. So just make sure you talk to someone, a coach or something about what typical costs are for competing uh, because it can really consume a large portion of your uh, paycheck. Uh, if you're not, you know, if you're not aware, uh, it can be something, you, you know, you weren't prepared for. So that's really important. Um, and then the other one, Road to Pro, uh, for girls that are on the way to getting a pro card, um, I would say, my biggest piece of advice, and I've, there's several girls I'm friends with, and, you know, there have been times where I've been that person too, do not just keep going for the sake of hunger and want to keep going. If you've gotten feedback or if you keep kind of coming up short, take the time off, like, oh my gosh, it's okay. It's going to be there. No one's going to forget about you. And uh, it's a right to gain a little body fat and to feel good you know, and not like you have to be hitting all these things every day, all day. Otherwise you missed your mark on a prep, like take some time to yourself, whatever that means for you and really take the judges feedback seriously. Cause they don't just do it for no reason. Like mm-hmm. if you follow it, you should come up how you need to, but take time off. I mean, and know when to take the pedal off the gas, I guess. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. I love that advice. Thank you for sharing all of that. I mean, like I said before, this episode has been absolutely amazing. It's been such a pleasure talking to you and I'm so glad that I found you and that we're connected. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I talk, I talk a lot, but. So do I. Hopefully that's okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. I, no, it's when good. I tell, when I tell, uh, tell my boyfriend how long this ran he's gonna be like of course it did <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> only that long <laughs> I know he's like how did you get all that in that amount of time I'm like oh I don't know but I mean it could be worse I could be like someone who is very hard to get answers out of so <laughs> hey I ain't gonna say anything about that but I'm great yeah <laughs> thank way. you so much I've loved it I wish I could do another hour you know but I know um, there's so much to talk about yeah we could always do a follow-up igtv live or some or ig live or something Uh, 
that would be fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, can you let everybody know where they can connect with you, work with you, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So I'm going to plug a couple of things real quick. So uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Lauren underscore Elizabeth underscore fix. Uh, Lauren Adams is my name. So you can just Google that or not Google Instagram search that I'm sure it'll come up at Lauren Elizabeth fit. Um, Email is um, Lauren E Adams one one at Gmail. If you have any questions about posing or um, you know, if you're a new competitor looking for someone to help you with coaching, I can help with that. I'm really focusing on posing right now, uh, but I'm always open to taking on newer competitors for, for prepping and, or you can just send me a DM for any of that stuff. Uh, Also, I'm going to be doing wellness and bikini posing for FaceTime right in person. If you're in the Carolinas, you can buy a one session or a three pack. Um, I'm going to post a flyer soon on my, on my Instagram. You can find that. Um, and then also my muscle egg, if you've never tried muscle egg, it's um, 100% egg whites, un, um, uh, double pasteurized flavored uh, egg whites that you can drink or use uh, you know, to cook different recipes with. They're my sponsor. I love them. I've been with them for a few years now, and um, they're linked, but you can get a big discount on their products is on my Instagram page as well. But if not, it's uh, muscleegg.com slash adamsfit um, forward slash. So you can always, uh, click on that and get your discounted muscle egg. They're uh, super awesome. I would never be able to diet or prep without it ever again. Now that I've had it. Um, my other big sponsor is silverback crew. It's silverback, uh, K R E W silverback crew is a clothing company. Um, and I supply me with all my gear and everything that I wear to the gym all the time. And, um, super awesome. Check that out. My code for that is muggle 10. Yes. <laughs> muggle like Harry Potter muggle 10. Um, and then Rubbish Sands is my suit sponsor. I've been with them for the whole duration of my career. And there's a code for you can use for swim or competition, which is Lauren. Um, there's a link on my uh, profile for that too. So uh, Rubbish Sands is literally the best uh, uh, suit company that I've ever worked with. I've I had one other before, but I can't say that I'm partial with them. I feel like they're family. I know there's a lot of great ones out there, but they will treat you like um, – one of their own. So love them. Jesse and those girls are great. So I had to shout them out and uh, that's all. That's all. That's all I got. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all that to everyone listening. I'm going to make sure all of those things are in the show notes page so that you can just like go to her profile and you can connect with her and see all of that as well. Um, And also, like I said, if you guys love this episode, please share it, leave a review, you know, rate review and subscribe. It helps the episode a lot. It means a lot to me. And of course the event is coming up, the build more than just a body live event. So If you're looking at the page for that and the tickets are no longer available, it means it's sold out. But I am going to mention it just in case. So we're about uh, 16 days away from that by the time you hear this. If you have any questions about it, just message me on Instagram. That's always in the show notes page as well. Uh, So with all of that being said, I hope that you all have an amazing rest of your day.